Hi everyone, I'm Scott Schneider of the Sestero Niche. New or vintage? It's a question that a lot of people, you know, ask themselves. And, you know, should they go vintage? Should they go new? Well, today I can't, I can't quite answer the question specifically. Everyone is individual, but I thought I would just do a quick look and see what's the cost of doing either one of those and then compare them. So stick around. All right, so let's talk about the contenders here. So uh, this is the system that I just did a, a review of the speakers and of the uh, receiver just recently. Haven't done one yet of the turntable, but that's coming up pretty soon. So on the speaker side, I've got the uh, set of Polk SDA 2s for a receiver. The, the, the recent um, review I did of the Yamaha CR1020. And then on the turntable side, the JVC QL66F, Y66F. Um, all nice, very nice units. Uh, any combination of these, they will certainly complement a system. And you know, together, it's a it's a it's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice system. Um, I think pretty much anybody would would uh, very much you know appreciate any of these. Now, being able to find all of these, uh, you know, at one time is probably pretty tough. Uh, the, probably the hardest piece to find is going to be this turntable, the JVC. Um, it's fairly rare, but again, this is just an example, and it just happened to be some units I had on display or set up here already. Um, so I thought, well, you know, pretty convenient. All I did was drag in the uh, uh, the speakers from the other room, and you know, voila, I had this configuration. So let's take a look at uh, what these cost originally, some of the features and what they cost originally, and then, you know, what does that look like in today's dollars? And then we can look at, you know, using that equivalency, what, what's the kind of equipment we can get today and how much, you know, would we spend and what that looks like. So let's start off with taking a look again at the summary of the, the current vintage system I put together. It's a Yamaha CR1020, the JVC QL Y66F for the turntable, and a set of Polk SDA2 speakers. A few specs for that. On the Yamaha side, it's 80 watts uh, into, into 4 ohms. It'll do 70 watts into 8 ohms. And then two phono stages. But as we know, you know, the one issue we often, you know, contend with for vending systems is it doesn't have a remote. On the turntable, it's a fully automatic. It's a direct drive, so no belts. And it has, you know, very soft touch push button controls. On the Polks, it uh, has an impedance of 4 ohms, a sensitivity of 88 decibels, and you know, it's a three-way. So now, looking at original retail. So in 1978, the Yamaha receiver cost $560. In 1984, for the other two units, the turntable, the JVC QL Y66F, was $700. And the Polk SDAs were $3,600, uh, I'm sorry, $1,200 a pair. Now, what does that equate to as far as, you know, the equivalency of how much was that money? How much is it worth today in 2023? So the Yamaha would have been 2780, you know, assuming no different cha no changes, but the, the, the valuation as it would be today, it was $2,700. The JVC was 2000 and the Polk speakers would have been $3,500 a pair, right? Okay. So using those prices, I went out and said, what's a modern equivalency and try to keep the budget about the same, you know, for modern system for each component. So these are the units that I went out and, and just pulled, uh, starting off with the Yamaha AS1200, the Music Hall MMF 7.3 turntable, and the Focal Aria 936 speakers. Here's some specs uh, on the receiver, uh, on the integrated amp anyway. This is 90 watts into eight ohms, it does have a phono stage, and of course it has the remote control, which is one of the biggest reasons to get a modern system, right? On the turntable, it does have a cartridge. It has a fiber, uh, carbon fiber tone arm, and this one is belt driven. It's manual though, so one big difference there. Um, on the speakers, three-way, uh, sensitivity of 92, so a little bit you know, more sensitive, and an impedance of eight ohms. So 
here are the prices, which I already told you that we're gonna, I was gonna try to get kind of close. And these are the posted uh, retail prices. 3,000 for the integrated amp, 1,900 for the turntable, and $3,600 for the set of speakers. So, you know, these are not inexpensive components by any means, but neither were, you know, the vintage gear in their day as well. So, you know, it doesn't make sense to look at lower end items today when, you know, and compare that to high end, more top of the line items, you know, vintage. So, so that's what it would have co would cost if you were to go buy these, this modern system right now. <clears throat> so going back now and looking back at the vintage system, how much does it cost used? And so I, I've just, you know, took a little, a few minutes and I went to try and find actual sold prices, not asking, but sold prices and values for each of these components. So the, the Yamaha 1020s are selling um, anywhere from 600 to 1200. Obviously you, you know, should be getting what you pay for. If you pay more, that typically means or should mean that there's either, you know, it's in much better condition with maybe all the boxes and materials perhaps, or more likely it has had some restoration. So, you know, maybe the power supply has been, you know, recapped or something. So there's a price range. And again, you can, this is online sales. If you find these locally, you can probably get these, you know, or most likely will get these at a lesser price. On the turntable, uh, it's, it's a still equivalent, you know, to a nice turntable today. The valuation of this turntable is still pretty expensive. You can certainly find other turntables, you know, on average that are vintage that will cost less, but this one is still selling from around 600 to 1100. Again, same thing. If it's on the higher end, it's probably had, you know, some sort of restoration done to it. And on the speaker side, probably the biggest bargain, uh, here, uh, you know, these are still, these are selling from around 250 to 400. Most likely that's condition. Of course, they should be all working. Um, maybe they've been recapped, maybe not. Um, you know, it's debatable if that is needed at this point, but either way, it's uh, I think probably the most bang for the buck as far as this vintage system is concerned. So let's compare, you know, the modern and the vintage system together as far as what that, you know, retails for and what you could buy them for today. So on the vintage side, we're talking about anywhere from 1450 up to 2700 and on the modern side, retail 8,500. Now, clearly you can get probably discounts, you know, and find them on sale, et cetera. But um, you can certainly do the same thing and find bargains on the vintage side. So, but you know, just taking it for what you can find and what information is out there, the vintage system is gonna be roughly, you know, anywhere from 20, 20 to 35, you know, 33%, 34%, something around there. Um, a third, basically, even on the high end of a modern system. Uh, so that's, I think, a, a pretty good uh, telling sign. You know, it's um, even though um, collectible vintage gear has gone up in value quite a bit over the last several years, when you compare it to the cost of new modern gear, I think it's still a relative bargain. Uh, if you're, you know, at all interested in buying more top of the, you know, top of the line items, if you do the same thing on the modern side, you're, you're still going to spend a lot more. And you can even go with the higher end pieces that have been restored and still come out, you know, much better. So I thought it was interesting. Hope you guys found it interesting as well. Uh, maybe, um, you know, maybe, maybe you think about it a little differently now than before, perhaps, you know, I don't know, but I thought it was an interesting exercise to do nonetheless. Uh, let me know your thoughts and, um, you know, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, if you want to make sure you don't miss a video, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.